All right, continuing in our series of Anderson and his lies, Stephen Anderson and his lies videos, here you actually have Stephen Anderson lying about dispensational theology and just showing his ignorance once again, if you haven't been convinced by now. Let's watch this. So think about how weird this is. Not only do they believe that a Jesus Christ rejecting blasphemous Jew in Israel is one of the chosen people of God. They believe that if that guy believes on Jesus Christ, he'll lose that blessing. So basically, while the unbelieving Jew is rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ, according to these uh, dispensationalists, they'll say God will bless those who bless him and curse those who curse him. But as soon as he believe on Jesus Christ, he's no longer going to be uh, receiving that blessing. God's no longer going to bless those that bless him and curse those that curse him because he's not a Jew anymore. He's a Christian. What kind of a bizarre doctrine do these people have? The truth. Pause there with that one clip, the first clip. Okay, first of all, I have never once heard that in all my years of being into dispensational teaching. I have never heard anybody ever say that once you get saved as a Jew, then you no longer have God's special covenant. Okay, um, I'm born in, I'm adopted into the family, to the nation of Israel. Okay, I'm a fellow citizen with the nation of Israel there. All right, they don't lose it. If I was Jewish and I got saved, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I would not lose that covenant that God made to Abraham and to Isaac and you know Jacob and on down through, I wouldn't lose that covenant. You still retain that. Let me show you a verse of scripture here in the New Testament to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. Now, what, what these replacement theology heretics will do, they'll go down here, Romans chapter 2, verse 28, and they'll say, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and in, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. And these heretics, these replacement theology people will say, See, so physical Jews are no more. But they won't read, they won't continue reading. These guys are famous for pulling Scripture out of context. Let's continue reading. Romans chapter 3, what advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Wait a second. I thought that it was supposed to be just, we were all spiritual Jews now. Well, if we're all spiritual Jews, Jew or Gentile, we're all just spiritual Jews, what advantage then hath the Jew? What's it talking about? It's talking about physical Jews. Let's continue. Verse 2, much every way chiefly, because on that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Hmm. And you can go down through and there's scripture after scripture after scripture talking about the benefits of being Jewish, a physical descendant of Abraham. Okay, I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of things about Hebrew culture and the Hebrew language and things that are fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Do you need them to, to know those things to get saved? No. You just need to know that you're a sinner and that you can't save yourself and that Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried and rose again to pay for your sins. That's all you need to know to be saved. Okay? That's right there. But I'll tell you what, there are some real benefits and advantages to knowing about a lot of the Jewish culture and a lot of the Jewish ways. And I'll grant you, there's a lot of things that they've added in. The Talmud is, is of course, very wicked, very unnecessary. There's a lot of other traditions and things that they've taken certain portions of the Old Testament and they say, well, it says this, so we should be doing that. And they have all these other things that they've added uh, to the scriptures and things and to their, to their belief system that are unnecessary. But you know what the funny thing is? Stephen Anderson, as an independent fundamental Catholic, has also added in hundreds of practices that appear nowhere in the King James Bible. The local church, Sunday best, the altar up front, you know, all this different stuff, the, the timing of the Sunday services, and you can go on and on and on and on and on. Wednesday prayer meeting, you know, visitation, door-to-door -door visitation, these things do not appear in the King James Bible. They went and they preached house to house, but it was meeting in those homes. They went out and they preached publicly. They weren't going and saying, would you like to come to our church? There are no physical church buildings in the New Testament. 
And yet, Stephen Anderson will do all these unscriptural traditions and he'll point the finger at the Jews and say, you wicked, blasphemous people that have added all these things to the scriptures. Maybe we ought to put a little picture of Stephen Anderson in the dictionaries under the name hypocrite. Let's watch the next clip. And so uh, you got to watch out for this dispensational doctrine. It's weirder than you think. I mean, when somebody starts saying that a person has a special blessing where God will bless those that bless them and curse those that curse them, that they lose when they believe on Jesus Christ, that's a pretty scary doctrine because, you know, when I believed on Jesus Christ, I gained all the promises. I gained all the blessings. To teach that you actually lose blessings and lose inheritance in Israel when you believe on Jesus is a very strange doctrine indeed. But that's where this warped interpretation of 1 Corinthians 10.32 leads you. Okay, there he referenced uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32, and this is how he tries to interpret it. Uh, give none offense, neither... Let me show it here on camera. Give none offense neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. And he says, see, there are three groups, lost Jews, lost Gentiles, and the church of God. Um, that's nonsense, okay? What he's trying to say here is you're not to give offense to people that are Jews there, those that are lost Jews, you know, and Gentiles, those that are lost Gentiles, don't offend them needlessly, and the church of God, you know, you don't, you're not supposed to cast or put stumbling blocks in their way and everything. But I want to show you another error that Anderson likes to make over and over again. Here in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, it says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Now Anderson, what he does is he goes like this. See, there's neither Jew nor Greek, we're all one in Christ Jesus. See, that's what he does. And what he's saying is, in Christ, you're a Christian, you're not a Jew or a Greek anymore. Oh, really? What advantage then hath the Jew? Look at the verse. There's neither bond nor free. Then why does the Bible talk in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and, and in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, I think it's chapter 5 or 6, where it talks about the bond servant being subject to his master? According to the flesh, there is a difference between bond servants and masters. Bond or free, there's a difference. But how about the next one? Look at that one. There's neither male nor female. So when you become a Christian, you become sexless? An androgynous being walking around, not man, not woman? Huh? Huh? What this verse is saying right here is, I can't say I'm better than women out there because I'm a man. In Christ Jesus, you're my sister in Christ if you're a woman. I'm your brother in Christ. I'm free. I'm not bond. I'm not a bond servant. But if you are a bond servant, I'm not better than you. You see? You understand? How about the thing of Jew or Greek? I'm a Gentile. I'm not a Jew. I can't say I'm better than a Jew, and a Jew can't say that they're better than me. We're all one in Christ Jesus. But guess what? There is a difference. There's a big difference. And I realize I do look, you know, Jewish, and I could probably go over to the streets of Jerusalem and Israel and things and walk around and, and get by just fine. Nobody would look at me and like, what are you doing over here? But if, if I was a descendant of Ham or some other types of descendants and things, you know, if I had you know, pale skin and orange hair or something like that or, or some other things, you go over to Jerusalem, you wouldn't fit in too good. See? There are differences between people, between kindreds. But when you get saved, you can't say, I'm superior to the other people. That's all the Scripture is teaching. And that's all the verses teaching over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32. It's not some dispensational heresy that we say that when you get saved, you lose all the covenants and everything else. That's nonsense. You know? Stephen Anderson, you ought to be ashamed of yourself.